right. All right. Let's settle down. It's just crypto. I am just, but my mama called me Justin. Welcome to another DFK video. This one is a bit different. This is not about gameplay like all my other ones. This is about the in-game economy for DFK, which is something I think about quite a lot, something I talk about quite a lot, mostly in Guild Chat, but also on uh, various podcasts. And the question that I pose today is, is the portal broken? Technically, no, it is not broken. The smart contract works as intended, but I'm not speaking technically. I'm, the I'm speaking theoretically, and I'm also not speaking about the portal on my screen. But before we get to the heart of the matter, let's talk about the portal on my screen. Currently, the hero floor is like 22, 20-ish crystal. It's been there for a while after a pretty large capitulation event down from 40, which doesn't necessarily feel great, doesn't necessarily look great, but I don't think that is the end of the world. In fact, I don't think any of the things that I'm going to talk about today are the end of the world. I don't mean this video to be like clickbaity or alarmist at all. I believe it just to be a discussion that needs to be had. I think a lot of people that I've heard talk about this are very close to what I'm talking about now, but not quite getting there or not quite having the same perspective that I do. So that's why I've decided to make this video after a couple weeks, honestly, of adding the idea back and forth and thinking about how exactly I wanted to do it. But hero inflation is an issue. It's a stated issue. We've talked about it half to death and it's not going away. So I feel like it's worth my time to make and edit this video to give my kind of perspective about the core issue that is involved and how the proposed solution of extending hero cooldown time kind of solves it, but doesn't really solve the core problem. Back to Crystal Vale, I do think this portal is functioning properly. With the floor so low, I, you really need to be selective on what you want to do a regular summon with on Crystal Vale. You know, we're talking Gen 0 summons, we're talking about good Gen 1 pairs with advanced mutations or multiple mutations, stuff like that. Good Gen 2 pairs with, with good mutations. You know, good pairs that you would want to summon to keep the parts, maybe sell some of them, but mostly you're trying to, to achieve something with the summons, you put some thought into it, and you're willing to take the risk of losing money on some amount of your summons in order to give yourself a chance to get lucky and get some of the high-end summons to keep for yourself. That's how I summon, that's how a lot of people summon, I think, but that is not how all people summon. That is not how the majority of the heroes are made in this game currently, and for the last, I don't know, year or so during our extended resource gathering period part of this game before combat comes out, many, 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 many heroes have been summoned, but not for this purpose. They've been summoned to immediately be sold because this portal exists on Saradale, and it is in some ways broken. Is broken the right term for that? Maybe you could use some others. Inefficient? Sure. Exploitable? Yes. I don't know. I'm going to go with broken because to me, when something is not operating as intended, that is a fair assessment. What is the intended purpose for having two portals? Feature parity? Something for Sarandale natives to use? Not sure I've ever met a Sarandale native, as in somebody who picked up DFK when it moved to Clayton and only uses Sarandale. But let's not be hyperbolic. I'm sure there exist at least one or two of them. And in order for them to enjoy the game and summoning, they need feature parity with summoning priced in Jade, heroes priced in Jade in the tavern, pets priced in Jade, land priced in Jade, am I missing anything? You get it, parity. That is the idea, I believe, but I don't believe it's working as intended because we do not have price parity to go along with our feature parity. This is the source of our problems. I'm going to take a minute here to talk about this very well thought out and communicated subject by our friend Dragonfly Tales. He is a very enfranchised play player, a very prolific summoner, as are a lot of people referenced here. And I certainly hold no ill will against anybody, just to be clear here, against anybody that is taking advantage of the Serendale portal. It's an arbitrage play. I don't blame any arbitragers. I've arbitraged myself. When they released Bitcoin on Crystal Vale and Ethereum for Crystal Vale, I arbitraged the hell out of both and bought a Gen Zero with the profits. If I had been smart enough to do this starting a year ago, I would have done it. You know, there's a big difference between an arbitrager and an exploiter in my mind. I'll link this thread in the description. You can go through and read in detail. I'll just go over the finer points right now. He's saying that hero inflation is not necessarily about summoning cooldown and burning mechanics, rather the discrepancy between Jade and Crystal. And the fact that the community has shown a strong preference to buy heroes in Crystal Vale instead of fracture their liquidity between two realms and use the Serendale uh, Tavern for much of anything means that if you're willing to bridge heroes over to Serendale and then bridge the summons back to Crystal Vale and sell them, you have basically a built-in profit. Or at least you did when the floor was holding strong at 40 Crystal. I'm not necessarily sure this is still true, 
But I am sure that if, if price ever goes back up, we're going to have the exact same issue if we don't ever fix it. Moving down a little bit, he's talking about just how many of the heroes are a, a result of this arbitrage. Iron Belly here weighing in. That price parity between the two realm tokens like I was just talking about. While it is a rational thought to think that this arbitrage would sort itself out, and I don't blame them for assuming that it would, the community has shown a somewhat irrational preference for Crystal Veil and does not view Jade the same way it views Crystal for whatever reason. Moving on, we have more, sum more Summoner's reference. This is not a secret. It's just kind of the uh, elephant in the room, like I said. I think he correctly concludes that increasing summoning cooldown would just cut into some gains, but not really solve the underlying issue. And like I said, as soon as the floor goes up again, we get more and more summons to just beat it down kind of indefinitely. And before moving on, he does show a good example here, kind of showing exactly what I'm going to be talking about here in terms of expected value. Mass hero producers will continue to produce while they have 100% chance of the gains in the arbitrage. You know, for a long time, people were just absorbing all these potatoes. They were getting bots. They were getting new wallets. They were just questing and questing because... Item, item price was higher, tiers especially was higher because people were hatching a bunch of pets, you know, if we're moving back six months ago. So like I said, I think that thread was really good. I'm not going to read it all to you. Basically, if people are willing to buy these heroes to subsidize these summoners, they will just keep doing it indefinitely. And that's kind of what happened recently is there was that capitulation. There's this exhaustion of buyers. People were just getting more and more bot accounts, opening more and more wallets and just absorbing these potatoes because they wanted the items, they wanted the tiers, they wanted to keep hatching pets. They wanted to level up with mokshas, but at some point, we just we just could not keep the floors up. We could not absorb all this supply, and price just went down and down and down. Will it stop at 20? Will it go to 15? Will it go to 10? I don't know. I don't really care. I'm not making all these potatoes. I'm not buying all these potatoes. They can just exist for all I care. But I do think this is the root cause. I do think this is worth discussing alongside the hero summoning cooldown issue. I want to take a couple of minutes now to go through some imperfect analogies that I've thought up with regards to this. My background is in statistics. I was a magic player, a poker player. That's kind of how I think about things. And while these analogies aren't perfect, you know, DFK is kind of its own thing. It's his trailblazer. What else would I compare it to if not something familiar? Even if it's not perfect, I think it's helpful to think about things in familiar terms. So at the core of the issue, you can make a summoning crystal in DFK. It has two inputs, which are your two heroes, all the traits, all the rarity, class, subclass, basically everything. The output is a random hero based on all those attributes. I think of this summoning crystal kind of like sealed product in a collectible card game, to make that analogy. Imperfect, yes, but if you think about it, with Pokemon, with Magic the Gathering, whatever, the price of these pr the sealed products, these out of print, that's important. This is from like four or five years ago, it's some innocuous set. But the key factor here is this price, 160 bucks, is always going to be higher than the sum of its contents, the expected value of its contents. There will be one or two chase cards, a couple of good cards to get, and then a bunch of crap in a box like this. So you're spending 160 bucks, you're opening 36 booster packs, every time you open a pack it has an expected value, you have so-and-so chance to get the really good card, so-and-so chance to get a good card, medium card, whatever, and then a whole bunch of crap, it all adds up to an expected value, and the important part is that expected value is always going to be less than 160 bucks in an efficient market for this sealed product. If there is ever a point where the expected value is above 160 bucks, guess what happens? No more sealed product. Every single one of them gets opened. So the reason this analogy is imperfect is because all of these have the same ex expected value. There's no inputs. There's no really good like mythic uh, heroes kind of to input and get a better crystal. Like all like the the crystals, the hero crystals are non fungible, whereas those uh, boxes are fungible. But I think it's interesting because of the human behavior part of it. If that price point ever gets uh, too low. A bunch of magic nerds are just going to sit there all day, every day, opening packs and making money. That's kind of what's been going on with our heroes. Because of the price dislocation or because of market conditions or whatever, when the expected value of a crystal is higher than the input into it in terms of money, people are just going to do it all day, every day. That's what's been happening. That's how we got so many heroes. We have hundreds and thousands of heroes based on just arbitrage summonings. Am I saying the solution to that is to make summoning unprofitable and so nobody does it so we have a lot less fun? Not necessarily. Like I said, it's different. But you can't ever expect somebody not to act in their own economic interest, especially if it's something super fun like summoning heroes, you know, getting like lotto tickets for a game you really enjoy. Why wouldn't you do that all day every day if it's profitable? It's like if there's a button on my desk right now that magically appears, it drops a hundred dollar bill every time I push it. I mean, how many times am I going to push it? Am I just going to push it a couple times and be like, ah, that's enough, whatever. Or am I going to order some Red Bulls and some adult diapers and be here and basically until I pass out? Probably the latter. Like that analogy? Of course you do. Here's another one. 
If you put yourself in the shoes of one of these mass summoners and assume they're going to act rationally, assume they're going to act in their own economic interest, whether they think about it in these terms or not, they're going to have some sort of a range of, of type of heroes that they're willing to summon with given the market conditions. These are two examples of poker ranges. On the left here, you see a much more narrow range with fewer hands selected. If you don't know that much about poker, don't worry, I'm going to bring it back to DFK in just a second. But this is based on parameters that are inputted. In this case, we're talking about our position on the table versus our opponent's position on the table. And due to those conditions, on the left, we're going to be using a much smaller range of hands, all of these red and green boxes, as opposed to on the right, we're going to be using a much wider range of hands, all of these red and green boxes. So how that relates to DFK, I think, again, probably not a perfect analogy, but it's what I got, is that there's a range of heroes that summoners are willing to do for profit based on market conditions. When the floor is at 40, 50 crystal, people are making threads about how profitable it is to get a bot and summon a thousand of them. People are making videos about it. Everything's great. Crystal's worth three times as much as Jade or two and a half times as much as Jade. You do the math. You summon with a lot of heroes. You're summoning Gen 2s. Five out of fives together. Whatever. Gen 3s. If they pair up decently, you're summoning them. Basically, any Gen 1s, as fast as you can get them in the door, the summons are going out the door because market conditions are great. Your range is wide for what you can summon. When market conditions change, like they are now, Hero Floor is at 20, buyers are exhausted, sentiment is low, nobody's talking about how great it is to have an army of heroes, you need to tighten up in order to stay profitable. You need to have a tighter range. Maybe you're only summoning Gen 0s, you're only summoning good Gen 1 pairs, only summoning good Gen 2 pairs that have a chance to make a Transcendent. You're only summoning pairs of good rarity stuffs just so that you're going to make as few potatoes as possible because in these market conditions, potatoes lose you money. So this is what I was saying before. Even if the numbers are down right now for summoning, that's not because we fixed anything. It's because the price of heroes are down. When the price of heroes go up, the summoners will expand their range and the rate of heroes hitting the market will be greatly increased. As things stand right now, obviously the summoning cooldown can affect this and will affect this and I don't have any problem with that actually, I'll get to that in just a second. But I think a more effective solution or, or maybe an additional solution to the summoning cooldowns is to affect the profitability either directly or indirectly of Serendale Portal. So now we're getting kind of into the meat of this video. I do want to say a quick aside. I had a lot of trepidation in making this just because I have kind of a philosophy, I don't know, in life or whatever that I try to hold to. Basically, don't bring up problems if you don't have a solution. You know, you could spend your time winning or complaining as much as you want to, or you could not. That's just my thoughts on the subject. This is not life advice. Anyways, I did think of a potential solution, so I've decided to go ahead and make this video, as well as some not so good solutions beforehand to kind of understand the problem a little bit more, if that is possible. So I'm approaching this under the assumption that the problem we're trying to solve is hero inflation, as opposed to solving the problem of hero cooldown, where hero cooldown just so happens to be the solution that has been brought up multiple times now and would in fact help solve hero inflation. But what else could be done? Obviously, there are two ways to go about it. One, we could increase demand. Two, we could decrease supply. Decreasing supply is the more actionable of the two in terms of what we could do right now, what they could do in terms of changing some code. Increasing demand would, of course, be awesome, but that involves basically just getting more players, getting more hype, having number go up, all things that we want to do, but how productive really is it to make a video saying, guys, have you thought about increasing demand? Because that'd be great. I'm sure they have thought about that, and furthermore, I'm sure that everything they do in terms of promotions and development is all in an effort to increase demand, and they don't need my advice on the subject. However, there are multiple ways to decrease supply in addition to increasing hero summoning cooldown. Like I spent the first part of this video explaining, if you were to get rid of the arbitrage heroes, which are the vast, vast majority of the heroes that have been summoned and are continuing to be summoned, that is a solution to current hero inflation and future hero inflation because I believe that's the root cause of it. In order to do that, we need to close the gap between Jade and Crystal. I'm not going to harp on this subject. I'm not going to be Monday morning quarterback about it. But let's just suffice it to say, things didn't necessarily go according to plan with Serendale in all respects. You know, they had to do what they had to do in terms of getting a second realm, getting another power token, getting a partner in Clayton to get them through the bear market. And it is absolutely miraculous that they did so and the project has survived to this point where we're in a bull market with a Metis partnership coming in ETH L2 and PvP on the horizon. I have no notes. I get it. I'm not here to make fun of Jade. If it got us to the bull market, it did its job. But I think anyone would have to admit, looking at it objectively, that it is now a liability and not an asset to the game. So we can't run it back, but what we would have to do in order to fix this arbitrage is figure out some way to close the gap in parity between Crystal. Now, in order for that to happen, basically, somebody's got to buy this token and hold it. People buy it all the time, summoning heroes, summoning pets, 
you know, if you just so happen to want one of the few heroes in the ta in the tavern, such as a Gen Zero, what you would have to do is buy about half a million Jade. You'd have to get your money in there, you'd have to pay the price impact, whatever it is, slippage, convert it to Jade, and then that person gets 96.5% of that half a million in Jade. And I'll spare you the indignity of looking at the Jade chart, but we have a lot of evidence to suggest that that person is just going to sell it, as opposed to buying and holding it where Jade could possibly go up. So we have Jade utility, but we don't have organic Jade demand. We don't have any reason for people to buy and hold Jade except for the gardens, which no longer are subsidized by emissions and are about cut in half after the orbit bridge hack. You know, that's for the tavern contract, that's for the selling of pets and land contract. The summoning and hatching contracts work a bit different. Some small percent gets burned, some goes to the quest fund, some goes to the jeweler. We're selling Jade for Jewel, we're selling Jade for part of the Quest Fund Jewel. Some of it goes to development. I don't think they're holding the Jade to develop. So I don't really think we're creating mini buy pressure with all these summons. That Jade is getting sold and then redistributed to other people in terms of Jade and Jewel. And then apparently they're selling the Jade. So the first potential solution to fixing this portal, now that we have 18 months worth of data telling us indisputably people prefer Crystal to Jade, and it's not going to fix itself. They could try to incentivize people to buy and hold it, or they could buy it themselves with torch emissions. That sounds like a legal nightmare, so I doubt that. But somebody needs to buy and hold this token if it's going to go up and repeg to Crystal. A second potential solution that is also not very good is to recognize that this portal is broken so long as there is this large price dislocation between Jade and Crystal. They are two different assets despite the, the attempts at parity, but currently they are not even close. Call it a 333% a premium that Crystal gets to Jade. So you could write something in both portals code that unless the two power tokens are within a certain parameters in terms of price, obviously they don't need to be right next to each other, but I don't know, maybe less than double, so that with that code in place, the Serendel portal currently would not be functioning because, because the price of Jade is not half of the price of Crystal or more. You know, whatever, the parameter is not really that important. I don't think this is that great of an idea, but it would be a way to solve this. And it is a good segue to my third and final potential solution, the one that I actually think is pretty decent, although a bit inelegant, is to go ahead and say, hey guys, we thought these power crystals were going to fix themselves, they were going to be relatively close, and there were going to be no issues having two portals. Didn't quite work out that way, so what we're going to do is kind of put our thumb on the scale in order to get the desired outcome, which is feature parity, which is essentially to have a similar USD value needed to summon in either realm so that there is not a large arbitrage opportunity in the hopes of controlling hero population. I'm Bob Barker. Don't forget to spay and neuter your heroes. We all remember this chart, of course. Shout out Stronghold. So what I'm basically saying that instead of, or in addition to using this top part of the chart with summoning cooldown, you know, instead of turning one of these fours into an eight for this series, to get 8, 16, 24, all the way down to 144, we could mess with the bottom part of this chart and add an if then else statement when determining how much a certain summon costs if current realm power token price greater than other realm power token price, then nothing changes. We use this table just like we have been. Else, we could multiply the normal price based on that table by the current percent difference in the two tokens. Right now, say we were summoning a Gen 1 and a Gen 1, their third summon, so 8 of eight, eight of 10s, we would multiply this 20 for both heroes by 3.34, and instead of spending 40 Jade for that summon, we would instead spend 133.8 Jade. Therefore, there would be no arbitrage between Crystal Veil vale and Serendale. There would be the exact same USD value between summoning on either portal, and a lot less heroes would get summoned for profit. But wait, not everybody summons for profit. Only 90 some percent of the heroes that are made are for profit. What about poor little Timmy who can barely afford to summon his heroes? He bridges them to Serendale, scrounges up his allowance money to get that jade, then summons them back and uh, quests them by hand and womp womp womp. We just ruined his day. Sorry, Timmy. But what I would say to that is, Timmy, wouldn't it be great if, if you got lucky summoning your heroes, maybe you do a few less, but if you get lucky and summon them, maybe you get a legendary dragoon or something like that, wouldn't it be great if it was worth something? Wouldn't it be great if for your one legendary dragoon, there weren't 15 legendary dragoons being summoned in the very same day and then immediately dumped on the tavern? I think that might be okay. Can't say for sure, but I can say no matter what solution they come up with to deal with hero inflation, not everybody's going to be happy. Not every solution is going to be elegant. 
Spending 137.8 jade is not as elegant as spending 40 jade from our nice clean table here. But hey, do we want to solve this problem or not? Do we want to solve this problem in the easiest, least disruptive problem? Or do we want to get to the heart of the matter? If it turns out that turning one of these fours into an eight is the least disruptive pro way to do it, albeit not solving the root of the problem, which will come back later, but it pisses the least amount of people off and gets done as quickly and pushes back PVP zero days, I'm actually for that. And for the record, I do have five gen zeros and I would still vote for it. But I just wanted to present another option. I wanted to shine some light on the heart of the issue. You know, if number starts going up, we start getting players. Does it really matter? No. Arbitrage summoners will make bank. Everybody that's holding heroes will make bank. Everybody that's good at PVP will make bank. None of this would matter. I don't actually think this is that big of a problem. I spoke with Styx intern about it, I believe 11 months ago in May, when this issue was first brought up by the team. And my opinion kind of hasn't changed. I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. I don't think it's worth pissing off some number of Gen Zero holders. I don't think it's worth uh, pissing off some number of Timmies who don't get to summon as much like I just described. But Hubert knows more than I do. Hubert is bringing it up multiple times. Hubert is talking about it a lot. So I would tend to defer to him in terms of modeling out the data. And if he's concerned, I'm concerned. I'm willing to solve it in whatever way makes sense. And I do think altering the summon costs instead of the summon cooldowns to eliminate the arbitrage summons is better. But that's just my opinion. Let me know if you feel different. Let me know if I missed some critical element. I don't think I did. But above all else, let's agree to disagree and remain friends because I don't actually care that much about this. I'm not on a crusade. I just want to get to PvP in the least disruptive way possible. So I hope you enjoyed this content. It was hard to make, so I don't know how much I'll do. But until the next time, just bus departing.